We'll jump straight across to our guest expert now. For the US session, we have Greg Donert. So I'm just switching the layout. And Greg, if you could introduce yourself, that would be great. Can everybody hear me? Yep, great, awesome, fantastic. Okay, great to have you all here. Um, so my name is Greg. I'm a designer and illustrator. I come from London. Uh, I'm thrilled to be here today. Um, it's really great. So thanks very much, Dan and Shani, for hosting. Um, this is going to be great. So first of all, if you're on social, um, I use uh, Twitter, Instagram, Behance, um, so you can kind of like connect to me on there. Uh, feel free to kind of ask me any kind of questions you might have or if there's any advice I can give you. Um, you can also check out my um, website. I've got a blog. Um, I talk a lot about how to kind of like survive in the creative industry. I do design tutorials and my portfolio is on there as well. So please do connect. So this is my little journey so far. Um, kind of started back in 2001 when I graduated. Um, <laughs> Just looking at this slide makes me feel really old. Um, and I sort of like started as a web designer um, and then kind of went on to kind of like progress uh, and be kind of like more into kind of graphic design and illustration as I was kind of going through my career. Um, but the thing to note is that while I was kind of working for all these kind of clients, I was also doing a lot of kind of personal work. And just kind of like making sure that I was doing sort of stuff that I was like really, really interested in. So, um, so yeah, so the personal work I do is kind of like inspired by all this stuff. So I'm a, like an absolutely massive music fan. Uh, I'm really into rock and that kind of shows in the kind of sort of work I kind of produce. Uh, I'm really into kind of like really colorful stuff um, and sort of like old school kind of 80s stuff as well. So like really bright neon colors and kind of like anime, um, just, just stuff that just generally looks quite cool and quite fun. And this kind of sort of inspires some of my work. So this is a little bit of a selection uh, of my work. Some of it's quite recent. Um, as I say, like I'm really into kind of vibrant colors and just like really trying to make an impact in what I do. So I do quite a lot of personal work, I was, as I was saying. Um, so the first project I'm going to talk about is a little project I did about a year ago called Avenge Stars. Now, I kind of had this, this kind of quirky idea one day. I was thinking, well, you know, what would happen if you kind of sort of mashed up the Avengers and Rock together? Because I love, I love Marvel stuff anyway. So like, what would, ha what would you know, what that could potentially look like? Um, and so I started off by kind of just putting out these like little teaser images. Um, and the whole kind of idea behind it was sort of to take a plectrum sort of shape and then put like the sort of character within that shape. And this was kind of to, to get people interested into the, into the project before I even kind of like started putting the artwork out. So, um, so here's a couple more. So this is obviously the Hulk and uh, this is a Thor, Thor's hammer. Um, so this was sort of like just to kind of like get people interested in the project this isn't this is and this is kind of like a little recommendation for me if you're doing like a little project kind of put out some teasers and like people start getting interested put little release dates and stuff it's always kind of cool to do that so this is some of the artwork that i released um so this is it's like really quirky and really fun so there's iron man playing guitar shredding a rate away there and kind of like hulk playing on drums if you can imagine that um there's a couple more um, if you go on my site, I've got like Thor and I've got Captain America as well on there. So if you have a, have a look around. And so, yeah, so this kind of shows a bit of a process of how I went about this. So I actually started by sketching things, uh, sketching Iron Man and then kind of like inking him in and kind of like just starting from kind of like bare bones, like just sketching. And then I created uh, a bunch of paintbrushes, like paintbrush strokes. Um, rather than kind of downloading anything pre-made, I made everything by hand. Um, I then scanned it in and kind of just uh, vectored up the, the sketch in uh, Illustrator. 
brought that into Photoshop and you can kind of see how the paint strokes are kind of applied afterwards. So all the paint strokes were kind of like put into the brushes palette in Photoshop and then I just kind of spent quite a while just putting in loads of detail into the actual paint strokes. Um, so yeah, so that was a, a really kind of like fun project to do. Um, and I'm still waiting to hear back from Marvel. If they ever want to hire me, you never know. But yeah, no, just like a really, a really fun project. And that's something I would advise is like for everyone, just, just have fun with stuff, you know, make stuff that's really fun. So um, quickly moving on, on to another, another personal project. This was a project I did about a year and a half ago, um, just kind of based around the World Cup, the Football World Cup or, or soccer, if you're from the States. Um, and I wanted to create some designs um, that kind of like w would potentially catch the eye of sponsors. Um, so sponsors like Coke, um, Pepsi and kind of McDonald's because I've always kind of wanted to work with them and I, I haven't had the chance yet. So I thought, oh, you know, I'm going to try and, and sort of put out these little quirky little ads uh, and just sort of like catch their attention. So for McDonald's, I did like I'm gloving it, um, came up with that instead of I'm loving it. So. Um, so a bit of fun there. I can see a couple of people kind of laughing in the chat. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so yeah, so those were really fun. And, um, so yeah, and, um, I got a little bit of attention on Twitter. Um, they kind of replied to me and sort of said, yeah, these are really cool. We really like them. Oh, I forgot to mention very quickly. If you go on my site, some of these are actually animated. So the Coke one's actually animated. I forgot to mention that. So if you have a look, they're actually like videos. So yeah, so they really liked it, but I didn't really kind of like get any kind of um, work from them yet. That's the thing. Again, similar to the Avengers one, no work yet, but it's, it's really interesting um, what happened. A few months later, um, these guys actually got in touch with me, which, you know, I think it was a few months after I released that. And um, yeah, it just shows you if you put out a, a kind of little project that's kind of really fun and cool. Um, big people can potentially get in touch with you, you know what I mean? Um, so yeah, so, um, so they got in touch with me. They said, right, we want you to create some illustrations for the tournament. We want you to make some stuff that will be sort of seen around the tournament. I had kind of no idea what exactly I was making. So, so yeah, so I started off um, creating a, a player illustration of um, sort of Dan, this is Dan Carter from New Zealand. Um, and it's sort of like he's kind of like bursting through like a wall almost. I wanted all these shards coming off him. So that was kind of like my first idea. And the, and the client was like, yeah, this, this is really cool. Um, but, you know, we want it to kind of be a bit more generic. We're not actually allowed to put players' faces on things. And I was like, oh, okay, that's a bit of a shame. I quite like that one. So, um, so I was like, okay, right, I'll, I'll move it on to kind of a, a, a more generic kind of player. Um, and instead of using shards, I, I thought I'd use ticker tape instead, just because um, it's a bit more fun and it's kind of a bit more festive to do with the tournament. And I, I was really happy with this concept. Um, but unfortunately, the, the, the client kind of said, yeah, it's, it's a bit too complicated. Um, we actually want to print this really big. So I was like, oh, OK. I had absolutely no idea where this was, where this was going to go. Um, so yeah, so uh, let's see. This is actually. Uh, the, the, the last kind of like final illustration. And yes, you can, print, you can print screen these if you want. You can take a screenshot, go ahead. Um, and so that's kind of like the final, final illustration. Uh, and what I did is I took the hoop kind of from the branding. So the hoop is in the branding originally. Um, so I took that and I put the player inside of it. And this is kind of like the final three. Unfortunately, they're a little bit pixelated on here. I'm not quite sure where. If you've got, if you've got my portfolio, you'll see them in all there high-res glory. Um, but yeah, there were three of them in total, the cup, the player, and the fans. And yeah, so this is actually where they ended up. So I had to, I had to wait uh, a whole year before I could actually talk about this. <laughs> um, I ended up having to wait a year, and they were like, okay, you can't talk about this until we actually put it out. I had no idea where it was going to go, and, and sort of went down to the fan zone in London, and this is kind of what it looked like. And I've been doing this stuff for like 10, 15 years, and I, I, I can actually finally say one of my designs was on a flag, <laughs> which is just ridiculous. It's just like, how, how on earth can that? Have, how on earth can I put my design on a flag? It's just ridiculous. But at the same time, just so cool and just like really, really like humbling. So yeah, so that was a really fun project. Um, 
And, you know, while it was an amazing project, if I'm honest, I'm, I'm not a massive sports fan. Um, uh, I'm actually, like I was saying, really into music. So this is actually something I've been working on more recently in, in the last few weeks. Um, this is a little series of print, uh, sort of like little graphics that I've been putting on Instagram, which is to do with music genres. So uh, I'm a massive metal fan, rock fan. So the first one I made was metal, which is the all, it's just to kind of try and convey the emotion of that particular genre of music and what it means to me. So metal is always really fast and hard and like, kind of like really aggressive. And I just absolutely love kind of like that kind of genre of music. But at the same time, I'm also a massive kind of 80s pop fan. And pop is just like really kind of bright, bubbly, fun, just like really, really, really awesome kind of like, you know, sort of fun stuff. Uh, here's a couple more. Um, so jazz is like, you know, a neon sign and kind of a smoky bar. If you can, if you can kind of imagine that, that's kind of like the kind of feeling I was going to try and get across. And obviously funk's just like really funky, you know, <laughs> I can't find another way of describing it. It's just really, really funky. Here we go. Hip hop and punk. So uh, thank you, Linda, for saying typography is awesome. Thank you. <laughs> so hip hop, yeah, just like gold and kind of like just really kind of like really sort of gold kind of looking type and then uh, punk is just like really rebellious and uh, if you can um, this is actually kind of like an homage to um, a uh, quite a famous punk band UK punk band see if you can if you know which UK punk band I'm talking about reply in the chat if you know which one I'm talking about yeah um, it's, a, it's a very famous band but, yeah. So there we go. So uh, I've quickly gone through all this. Um, so here's a few lessons, um, stuff I've learned over the years. So the majority of these projects are all kind of personal work. And if I think if, you, if you're really interested in pursuing a career in, in design, um, just don't be afraid to experiment and try things out. You know, it's, it's just really fun. And when it, you know, it's just like magic, you know, it just, it just shows your potential, what you can do. Uh, and, and, you know, potential clients and other people just really like that. You're showing what you, what you want to do. Um, do a lot of personal work, you know. This, like for me, is like I would never, I would never ever have gotten to work with a Rugby World Cup ever if I hadn't put out that project. So it just shows you, you know, you never know where it's going to end up, where your work's going to end up and who's going to see it. So, you know, it's really important that you just keep, keep doing personal work. Make stuff that you love. Um, I'm a big believer of just following your passions. And, you know, if, if, you, if you kind of work kind of a day job or something like that and, you know, you kind of get a bit down in the dump sometimes, just like come home and if you have an hour spare, just make something in, in, in Photoshop or Illustrator. Just make something. You know, it can be anything, you know, and just have fun with it, you know. Um, so, yeah, so that is my little talk. Um, Please, please, please connect to me on Twitter. Uh, I will answer kind of any questions after this session. Um, uh, also, check out my Instagram feed. Basically, all my latest work is on my Instagram feed. Um, so anything that isn't in here is probably on Instagram. And also check out Behance. I try to update that <laughs> uh, as much as I can. Uh, but and again, my main site is phoenixstudios.co.uk. Um, you can check out like my blog and all the rest of it by all means. Yeah, thank you very much. Cheers, guys. Thanks for all the positive feedback. Cheers. Greg, can I ask you a couple questions real quick? Of course. Hey, yeah. So, okay, so I'm coming at this now from a teacher's perspective. Uh, so what kind of got you started? I mean, you had some passion, like to draw, like, where did that all start? So, I mean, where I started, I was I was actually really into web because when I was when I was in university, um, the web was really new. So it was like you could make all the flash was really new. Like you could you could make all these amazing things. So that's how I got started. Um, but I've kind of evolved from going just to from web design to just making stuff that reminds me of kind of like the stuff I really love. That's kind of my ev evolution, I guess. Okay, so now you've got about a hundred of us in here. A lot of us are teachers. Uh, what kind of thoughts do you have for us as we work with uh, some of these younger students, 14, 15 year old in a lot of cases, um, that are kind of just getting started? Like, what would you say we could do that would be of most benefit to help people kind of grow and learn and do some of the things you've done? 
Yeah, I mean, to be honest with you, this is why I kind of preach the whole personal projects thing, because I think if somebody had told me that when I was learning, uh, I think I'd be even further than where I am now. And it's only kind of just in the last few years that I've really kind of discovered that personal projects and making stuff that you're really into is the best kind of creativity in a way. It's just like, it's just really pure. There's no kind of deadline. There's no kind of person telling you, oh, you must have it done by this time. If you're just kind of exploring stuff and playing with stuff, it's just really fun, you know? Okay. And then another question coming out of the chat here is they're wondering uh, if you have like a favorite tool uh, that you use when you're designing graphics for web or, you know, print. Is there a different tool you prefer depending on what you're doing? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, I, I'm, a, I'm a pure sort of Photoshop user, I guess. Uh, Photoshop was the first thing I ever learned. Um, and then kind of over the years, I moved kind of back into Illustrator and InDesign. So Illustrator for me is, is great for icons and kind of vector work. And Photoshop is for kind of like really kind of like, like really high kind of impact, lots of texture kind of sort of looking stuff. And then InDesign I use for print. So that's kind of my three core tools, really. Um, but I've also, I mean, I've recently got a, um, a Cintiq, a Wacom Cintiq. So I've started using that a bit more to try and speed up my process. Okay. And uh, I got maybe just one more question here out of the chat. They're wondering what you think of Adobe Muse since you've done some web design and stuff in the past. Well, this is, this is a slight, slightly embarrassing slash, well, interesting and in that i've never actually used muse <laughs> um i'm a kind of a i'm kind of like an old school web designer so i used dreamweaver back in the day uh, and that's still what i'm using today um dreamweaver and just hand coding basically yeah well and that i think is uh quite the skill i mean i've done a little bit of web but you know the muse thing i think has enabled some of us that have wanted to but maybe couldn't so but uh, yeah, great. yeah. I mean, I, I think I've seen it. I've seen bits of Muse actually advertised and stuff, and it, it does look like great, a great piece of software. It's just I think I'm just a bit old, a bit old fashioned in that I like to know the code and what I'm doing and have complete control, I suppose, in some way. Yeah. Well, I mean, when, when you're dealing with code too, you don't have to find any buttons, right? Like, yeah, exactly. You just have to find the semicolon you missed. <laughs> yeah that's it exactly great, great that's it that was fabulous we got uh, avengers and rock all in the same thing i don't think we could ask for much more oh, oh man that's that's totally my my bag that's totally my thing <laughs> i love it <laughs> great well we appreciate you coming tonight greg thank you so much sure i mean if there's any more questions like i say i'm happy to answer in the chat and what i'll do is i'll scroll up the chat now and just kind of like answer any questions well, that'd be wonderful that, yeah mate. Right, take care of some of those and i think we'll yeah. uh, turn it back over to shawnee then to uh kind of keep us rolling through the night but greg thanks wonderful work it was great